Hey, shalom, shalom. I am so excited to talk with you about Pesach, Passover by the numbers. You all know that I love numbers. And so we're going to look at what's significant about Passover beginning on the day that it begins. Okay. We are going to look at the numerical value of the Passover, of matzah, of maror. And there are some incredible insights and connections that are made. I love the numbers because we live in a mathematical universe. Now, listen, we don't make doctrines by the numbers, but I love that kind of road to Emmaus experience about seeing how it all connects in a creative and a deeper way. So we're going to jump in and look at that here in a moment this evening. But I want to encourage you, this week is Pesach. This week, tomorrow night, that <laughs> starts Passover, right? So it's such a significant time. As you know, every major event in the life of Yeshua happens on a biblical holiday. And so this is the time where we bring our Passover sacrifices to the Lord. And so I just want to encourage you. It's a time that we give our first fruits. Listen, if you are blessed by what we're doing, we can't do this without you. We don't charge for the majority of things that we do. So would you give a Passover offering in diffusion? We'd appreciate that so much. Also, listen, if you want to learn more about Passover this season, we have a course, Walking with Rabbi Jesus. It goes in from you know, from preparing for, for Yeshua's last week from Palm Sunday through the cleansing of the temple, through Passover, the Last Supper, his death, his resurrection, Pentecost, all that. And we have a how-to guide on how to do Passover with your family, in-depth, detail, everything you need, and the, the Haggadah, the book you need to do it. Talk more about that later. Shalom, shalom to all you who are joining from around the world. It is good to see you. <laughs> so excited this evening to get into Passover by the numbers. I want to begin by reading a verse to you. And uh, it says this, Ad Arba'a Asar Yom Lechodesh Hazet. On the 14th day of the month of Nisan, ultimately, right? When all the members of the community gather together, they must slaughter the Passover lamb at twilight. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is of all the days that God could have chosen to pick for the Passover lamb to begin, of the offering and for Passover to begin, why did he pick the 14th day? Obviously, there is something significant about that day. What does the numbers tell us? So the first thing we have to understand, friends, is that in Hebrew, you write letters with numbers, okay? Letters with numbers. And so the way that you write 14 in Hebrew, the standard way you write 14 is the letter Yud and the letter Dalit. Letter Yud and letter Dalit, guess what that spells? that actually spells hand in Hebrew. So the reason why God does, one of the reasons why God does um, this miracle on the 14th day of the month of Nisan is that 14 is the number of the hand, okay? And so it says, I will bring you out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. So it's, 14 is about God's arm bringing about redemption. Passover is all about the hands. It's about God's hand doing miracles in order to set us free. But there's something more about the 14th, right? Pharaoh thought that he was the greatest and most powerful leader of his day, that his hand controlled the destiny of Israel, the destiny of Egypt, maybe even the destiny of the world. Pharaoh saw himself and the Egyptians saw him as a sort of semi-divine kind of a uh, 
demigod, okay? And it was through him and through his hand that order was actually maintained in Egypt, okay? But Passover demonstrates that it's God's hand that guides and determines the destiny and history of his people and of the world. Pharaoh's hand, his yod, which equals 14, was powerless in the light of Adonai's yod, God's hand, okay? Pharaoh's hands were power powerless in comparison to the providential power of God's hand, okay? But of course, there is more. So 14 is the number of the hand, and it happens in the month of Nisan. Nisan means miracle, okay? So this is a time and a season where God's hand worked miracles for the children of Israel, showed them redemption, and ultimately in fulfilled in Messiah, you know, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed, right? It's revealed in the person of Yeshua. He says, my own hand, his own hand worked redemption for us. So I just want to declare over you right now, you are going to see God's hand do something supernatural and miraculous in your life. This is a time when God wants to make his hand manifest okay and then we go on to read this they're to take some of the blood and put them on the sides okay and on the door door frames of the house and they're to eat the lamb they that same night they, they eat the passover the pesach meat roasted over the fire with maror bitter herbs and with matzah unleavened bread so there are these Three key elements listed in Exodus 12, 12, right? And in fact, the great rabbi Gamaliel, who is actually the teacher and rabbi of the Apostle Paul, says this in the Passover Haggadah that we read from, the book that we read from uh, on Passover. He says, you have to explain three things. The Pesach, the Passover, uh, the maror, the bitter herbs, and the matzah, okay? So I want to look at those three things by the numbers, okay? Are you ready to look at them by the numbers? Because there's some really amazing things here, right? So pe Pesach, can you say Pesach? Pesach, Passover, has a numerical value of 148. What's incredible about that is 148 is a numerical value of the Hebrew word netzach. Netzach. Netzach means victory. It means endurance. It means strength, okay? And it can even, as we'll see, mean eternity. This is so important, okay? The Passover offering 148 gave Israel the strength 148 to have victory 148 over pharaohs and the gods of Egypt. Come on, right? <laughs> it's important to understand that the Egyptians, one of the ways they pictured God, one of their gods was represented as a lamb. One of the primary gods of Egypt was represented as a lamb or as a, a ram lamb, okay? Ram is sheep, okay? So slaying the Passover lamb 148, which was one of the signs of the gods of Egypt and was the sign of the month, the zodiac for the month, okay, of Israel's uh, redemption demonstrated the strength 148 of the God of Israel over the gods of Egypt, okay? So God was dismantling and showing that Pharaoh and the gods of Egypt were absolutely powerless, right? The ninth plague, darkness, one of the main gods of Egypt was Ra, the sun god. Well, the sun didn't shine, okay? No powerless, okay? You can actually look at all of the 10 plagues, and they were actually an attack on a different one of the primary gods of Egypt, okay? So, so again... Passover 148 gave Israel, demonstrated God's strength 148, 
okay, to defeat and be victorious 148 over the principalities and powers of Egypt, okay? But there's more. <laughs> there's always more, right? Iniquity equals 148 in Hebrew. Plague equals 148 in Hebrew. Uh, promise equals 148 in Greek. And Bene Elohim, children of God, equals 148. And the word Netzach equals 148, which can either mean, again, victory or eternity. So what do we see here? Messiah, Messiah died at Passover 148, as the Passover lamb 148, for the iniquity of Israel 148, and the nations that we might be saved and have the victory 148 over the plague 148 of sin and death and experience the promise of eternity 148 for as many as believe to them he gave the right to become the B'nai Elohim the children of God 148 <laughs> come on I don't know about you but uh, I think that's uh, pretty amazing right and Eight, one plus four plus eight equals 13. And 13 is the number of love. So all of this demonstrates God's love for us. I love the comments. Keep the comments coming. <laughs> They're always so uh, encouraging. We'd love to know what you think as we are going through this, okay? So let's keep going on. So we looked at the 14th of Nisan, okay? We looked at the numerical value of Passover, okay, 148. Now, let's continue on and let's look at matzah. Can you say matzah? Matzah has the numerical value of 135, okay? <laughs> 135. And that's significant for several reasons. Number one, it says that the whole assembly of the congregation was to slaughter the Passover at twilight. The numerical value of kahal, can you say kahal? Kahal is the Hebrew word for assembly equals, guess what? 135 the same numerical value of matzah. So this connects matzah with the Passover lamb, with the assembly, but there's something more, okay? At the Passover, it's every Passover Seder, you take three pieces of matzah, okay? Matzot in the plural, and you put them in a bag called a matzatash, Okay. And the matzotash has three compartments, and each one of those compartments has a separate piece of matzah in it. Then it's traditional to take the middle piece of matzah, the second piece of matzah, break that piece of matzah, wrap it in a white linen cloth, hide it, and bring it back at the end of the Passover Seder, okay? Now, the rabbis asked the question, right? Why three pieces of matzah? If there's three pieces of matzah, there has to be a reason, right? Well, one of the, one of the primary reasons the rabbis give is because there are three patriarchs, three shalosh avot. There are three patriarchs, Avraham Avinu, Abraham, Yitzchak, Isaac, and Yaakov, Jacob, our father, right? So three patriarchs. So the first piece would be Abraham, the second piece would be Isaac, and the third piece would be Jacob, right? And so the middle piece of matzah, which is broken, represents Isaac. Well, think about it for a moment. Isaac is actually a type of Messiah. God says to Abraham, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and offer him as a burnt offering on the mountain that I am going to show you. Right. So it's a picture of the father offering his only begotten son as a sacrifice in Jerusalem 
on Mount Moriah. That's where the Father in heaven allows his son to the second person of the Godhead, right, to give his life, okay, as a sacrifice for us. Isaac carried his own wood like Yeshua carried his own cross. How does this all connect with the number 135? Well, 135 is not only the numerical value of matzah, but in Genesis 22, and he says, to offer your son Isaac as a burnt offering, as a burnt offering uh, for an olah, for a burnt offering, Hebrew equals 135. Come on, <laughs> right? So literally, Isaac being offered as a burnt offering has the same numerical value of matzah tied to the second piece of matzah that is broken, which represents Isaac all connected back as Yeshua, the greater sacrifice. Okay. It's amazing, right? It's amazing. But of course there is more. One of the most quoted messianic Psalms in the new Testament that we read on Passover, at the Passover Seder, and uh, every day during Passover, you say the Psalms known as the Hallel Psalms. And one of the one of the most quoted messianic passages in the New Testament, Psalms in the New Testament, comes from Psalm 118, part of the Hallel Psalms. The Hallel means praise. Part of the Psalms of praise, like Hallelujah, ha ha Hallel. Okay. Psalm 118, it says this, Evan pina, the stone which the builders have rejected have become the chief cornerstone. Okay, so why is that important? Cornerstone in Hebrew has a numerical value of guess what? 135, right? Pina or Okay, from the word pana, okay? So 135, the matzah, which is the bread of affliction, is a picture of Messiah who was rejected, just like the matzah is broken, buried. It's known in Hebrew as the lechemonites. The matzah is known as one of its aspects, as the bread of affliction. Our slavery in Egypt, it points to the affliction that the Messiah would go through and the rejection he would experience for us, as the suffering servant of Isaiah 53, right? But ultimately, the stone which the builders have rejected becomes the Rosh Pina, Pana, the chief cornerstone, 135. Come on. But there's still more. 135 is the numerical value of the Hebrew phrase to make king, okay? And kingdom. In Hebrew, both equal 135. The word for glory in Greek, doxa, equals 135. So Messiah Yeshua is the cornerstone, 135, who was made king, 145, to whom belongs the kingdom, 135, and the glory, 135, okay? Come on, <laughs> there's more, but uh, for the sake of time, we're, we're not going to get into that this evening. Lots to do to prepare for uh, Passover, but one more I want to look at, right? So we've looked at the 14th of Nisan, the day the Passover lamb was offered. We've looked um, at Pesach, the Passover sacrifice, okay, in the name of the holiday, and we've looked at the matzah, the unleavened bread. Okay. So, so yeah. So I want to talk with you something a little bit more. Hey, I see Patricia. Shalom to you. I want to look at you. Look at you. One other thing. I hope this is uh, meaningful to you all to see these connections. Okay. The third key element is the maror. Can you say maror? The maror is the bitter herbs, okay? We're to eat the bitter herbs at the Passover. 
which symbolizes the bitterness of slavery in Egypt. There is the maror, which is the horseradish. And then there's another bitter herb known as the haroset, which is like apples and honey uh, that symbolize or dates or wine or grape juice. Reminds us of the mortar that we use to make bricks in Egypt. So the question is, well, you have the maror one is really bitter. The horseradish one is sweet. You mix them together. What's the significance of that? Because when we knew our redemption was drawing near, even the bitterness of slavery became sweet. As it says, God works all things out together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. So the Lord is in the business of turning the bittersweet. And so I just want to, I just want to pray right now and believe that whatever bitterness you are experiencing in your life, when I mean bitterness, I mean things that are not that you're bitter, but things that are like bitter, that are hard, that are unpleasant, that are just kind of painful in your life. I just want to pray right now, Lord, turn everything that is bitter and begin to make it sweet. And I pray that even in the midst of the tough stuff, we would still be able to taste and see that you are good because we know that these momentary light afflictions are producing in us an eternal weight of glory. Okay, but also what's significant about the bitter herb, and we're going to see something that's pretty, I, 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 this, I was blown away. I'm just going to be honest with you. I was blown away with some of the things that with, with the number that's connected to the bitter herbs. Okay. I think this is really going to be incredible. Okay. And just shows you how God's hand is in every detail of the scripture and same way he wants to be in every detail of our life. Okay. So on the night that our Lord was betrayed, this is what it says. Okay. He revealed his betrayer. It says this, it is the one whom I give this piece of matzah who I've dipped in the dish. And he gave it to Judas. So the one who was going to betray him was the one whom Yeshua dipped in the bitter herb and gave it to a person to eat at that time. And then it says he, Judas ate and Satan entered Judas. Okay. So again, so in addition to the bitterness of slavery, which is the traditional thing that the bitter herb represents, it represents the bitterness of separation and rejection of Yeshua, which is exemplified by Judas, okay? So he, in Hebrew, the numerical value of Maror is 446. Why is that significant? 446 is also the numerical value of the Hebrew word mavet, and mavet means death. So bitter, bitter herbs equals death. Listen, on one level, if you allow bitterness to take root in your life, it leads to death, death of relationships, leads to emotional death, and that root of bitterness can even lead to spiritual death. I think there was a root of bitterness in Judas that ultimately let, led to his betrayal. So the point is this, all those, okay, who reject Yeshua, okay, like Judas, will experience the bitterness 446 of death 446 okay so those who reject yeshua 446 experience the bitterness 446 of death 446 okay but of course there is more okay uh, 446 is also the numerical value of the hebrew word talui okay why is that important? Where does that occur in a way that is significant? Friends, this is amazing, right? In Deuteronomy, this is what it says. Talui means to hang, okay? 
And Deuteronomy says, his body is not to remain on the tree all night. Instead, you must bury him that same day for anyone hanging on the tree is cursed. Cursed is the one who hangs on the tree. The word for hangs is 446. The same numerical value of bitter herb, 446. And of death, 446. Why is that important? Because Yeshua gives Judas the bitter herb, 446. And the numerical value of the bitter herb, 446, is connected to death, 446. And it's actually the number that alludes to how Judas is going to die. Hanging on the tree can refer to someone being hung by the neck, okay? Now, Judas, this man, Judas, bought a field with the reward of his wickedness. Falling headfirst, he burst open, and the middle of his intestines fell out. Listen, Judah hung, Judah died by hanging himself, okay? And then it says he fell head first. Well, not only is hang, like hang on a tree, equal 446, but head first equals, guess what? 446. Pray nace in the Greek. Pray nace in the Greek is 446. So the numerical value of bitter herbs predict 446 predicted Judah's death 446 by hanging 446. And not just hanging, but how he fell as he was being ha ha hung which was head first, it broke, and he fell, and his intestines spread out. Listen, he fell head first. Why is that significant? Think about it for a moment. Because as a sign of his betrayal of Yeshua, it says the way that the authorities knew the one who was Yeshua, who they'd arrest, is Judah kissed him on the what? Head. Right? The cheek or the lips are part of the head, Okay. And this ties back to the first messianic prophecy. The seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. Yeshua was doing, Judas was doing the work of Satan, the work of the serpent. He was trying to crush Yeshua's head. He was actually possessed by Satan at the end. But of course, there is more. I want you to think about it. Another way to, to look at the number 446 is to add it up. Four plus four plus six. Six plus four plus four. 446 equals 14. Why is that significant? 14 is the number of the day of Passover, 14th of the month of Nisan. It represents the hand, okay? It was Judas raising his hand against the Lord's anointed, which never works out well. And how does he betray? Yeshua says, the one in whom his hand dips the sop, that is the one who betrays him, right? Hand 14, Judas the betrayer. 446 adds up. Bit uh, friends, do you see the connection here? Come on, okay? I don't know about you, but I think this is pretty incredible. Okay, pretty incredible. So there's so many other numbers we could get into, but tonight is the night that we search for the leaven in the house. Make sure all the leaven is out of the house. Okay, so I got to go do that. And very excited. Want to ask you all for your prayers. Uh, myself along with my a writing partner, Kathy Lee, we're going to be uh, filming. We're going to be getting ready for an interview with Shannon Bream that's going to air on Fox on Sunday. And we're doing a lot of some other media, including our live Passover Seder on TBN on Thursday night. It's not a full every aspect of the Seder, but there's going to be a lot there. Okay, so that's going to be on the second night. So be praying for us. We've got a lot of stuff going on. We need your prayers. We want to see people, the hand of God, touch people this Passover and to see the miracle of redemption and freedom 
and deliverance come into their lives. And so again, we want you to experience that as well. So I want to encourage you, right? On the first night of Passover, we have the Seder. It's traditional to do a Seder on the second night of Passover for those who live outside the land of Israel. In Israel, it's one night. Everywhere else, it's two nights. Okay, biblically, it was one night, but it's tradition becomes two nights. But not only is there a Seder on the second night, that's when we're doing the TBN Seder. That's when Yeshua would have celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples, okay? But in addition to that, there's something known as the counting of the Omer. So beginning on the second uh, beginning on the beginning on the second night of Passover, we begin to count the Omer. Okay, the Omer was the 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 first fruits offering that was waved before the Lord. An Omer, which is a measurement, okay, of the of the barley, an Omer amount of the barley was waved as a wave offering before the Lord in the temple as the first fruits offering to God. So everyone would begin to bring their first fruits. Well, why is that so significant? Yeshua rose on the holiday of first fruits. The resurrection happens on first fruits. Not going to get all into that. It's in our course, in depth, walking with Rabbi Jesus, in our book, aligning with God's appointed times. Okay, over my shoulder, you can see it. But beginning on Shavuot, I mean, beginning on, on, on first fruits, there's a 49-day countdown to the 50th day, which is... Shavuot, Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, Holy Spirit given. It's also the day of the Torah, the Ten Commandments, Exodus 19 and 20. So word and spirit given on the same day. Very significant. Well, listen, we have, it's a biblical, in the Bible, you are to count the day of the Omer. Count down the Omer, right? It's your counting down. It's, it's a time of expectation, right? We're expecting God to move. We're counting down the days to Pentecost, okay? So listen, we have if you we have a we have an email that we're sending out every day, so you can count with us. Traditional to count in the evenings, okay? But whenever you count, count, make a count, <laughs> make these days count, count down, okay? Count down to Pentecost. We shouldn't ignore it. It's so important. It's a great way to prepare ourselves. Listen, sign up for the email. Little, you, We'll give you the count, a little devotional every day. It'll be a blessing to you. Listen, your first fruits offering, support us. We can't do this without you. Listen, God says he'll bless those who bless Israel. I don't often say that. But listen, there's a blessing for blessing the work of bringing the Messiah and the truth of the old and new, how it connects to the world, okay? Both uh, Jews and Gentiles, okay? And again, we have our Passover resources. We have our Passover Haggadah, right? Every step of the Passover is in here, right? So I just want to encourage you to check this out. I'm looking for a really good. Look, we go to Safun, right, which is the, middle piece of matzah, and we talk about how it points to Yeshua. So listen, it's a great resources, and we have all sorts of things for you to get the most out of this season. It's another way you can support us. We love you. Uh, we bless you. We are grateful for you. And so I just declare over you that this should be a season of God giving you the victory. Pass over 148 uh, Passover has a numerical value, as we said, of a victory, which is so important. 148. So we are just declaring, okay, that God, this Passover is going to give you the endurance. 148. He is going to give you the strength, 148, because you have placed your faith in the Lamb, the Messiah, 148. You will overcome. So even as Yeshua 
came riding into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, and they cried out, Anna Adonai Hoshiana, Lord grant salvation and deliverance now. Anna Adonai Haslechalat now, Lord grant success now. I just declare success and victory over you in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. It is time to come out of Egypt, and I just bless you in his name. Amen. Amen. I hope this was a blessing for you. If it was a blessing, share it with a friend, okay? Also, don't forget, we have Fusion Tribes. Listen, if you want to be a Fusion small group leader, we have videos, teaching guides, gather some friends in person or virtually, come together and Learn in community. It's great. Learn with me, but gather your friends and learn together. Gather your family. Learn together. This Passover, say, hey, listen, we're getting ready to launch our spring tribe season. Rabbi Ryan and myself have been working on it. It's going to be on Shavuot. It's going to be on the counting of the Omer. It's going to be on Pentecost, Shavuot, what it means in the Hebrew scriptures, Old Testament, what it means, Acts chapter 2, the New Testament. And we're going to be talking about the Beit Hamikdash, the temple, where, which is the focus of this holiday season. So listen, you can create a virtual tribe, you can create an in-person tribe, and or you can join one of our virtual tribes, okay? <laughs> so anyway, just want to say Chag Sameach. Want to wish you all a Zizan Pesach, a sweet Passover in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Bless you all. Shalom, shalom.